Hi there, and welcome along to some more physics. Obviously, we're doing refraction at the moment, so I'm just kind of showing you crazy world of refraction. Looks like there's a gap in the pencil, doesn't it? And obviously, seeing the pencil through the air with one refractive index from through the water, the different one, and that's bent the rays of light. But that's not only really what we're up to today. Today, what we're going to do is lots of detritus left from earlier experiments, the kind of the whole mad scientist going on thing here. Don't actually need a pencil in that glass of water. So um, I did a bit of looting before I left the college. Um, grabbed some stuff so we could do some practical stuff on refraction. Um, didn't bother with a ray box, though. I thought a torch would do. And I have made it work with a torch. Way more complicated than I thought. So got the old comb here to create a single beam of light. But I've looked at the moment. Um, got a glass of water. Let me just turn it on and show you um, what's going on. Oh dear, that's a bit horrible, isn't it? So that's the max power setting. So it gives us a reasonable beam of light. Um, but it, it kind of was a bit broader than I hoped. So I've used this glass of water uh, as a lens. It's a converging lens. If you have a look down here, I then created a little slit in two pieces of aluminium foil. Um, and then we've got a block and you can see some refraction going on in there. We've got a bit of a hint there. I've uh, printed out a, 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 refract, a protractor, not a refractor from the internet. And we're going to have a go at making some measurements and um, uh, measuring the refractive index of this block. OK, so I'm just going to loop you onto this. It's unfortunately a piece of chemistry equipment. I do, do apologise. That's uh, not really what the sort of thing you want in a physics video. So um, I'm just going to get this neatly lined up and then I'm just gonna just show you the basic basic ideas before we make any measurements so we've got um I, think I need to just get my scissors what a great pair of scissors my auntie sent me um chop through your fingers in seconds so I have to be careful um full risk assessment has been done of course so um Got our ray of light. Now, if it comes down the normal, remember the normal means the um, ray of light that comes down here perpendicular to the surface of the glass. You can see the rays come through completely undeviated. A ray of light traveling along the normal it isn't doesn't have a change of direction. And then as I rotate this round, you can see. The ray of light is become more and more bent. It's becoming more and more obviously not a straight line. You also see a, a refract, a reflected ray here. Um, Non-metals do reflect light. Um, okay, so I'm just going to set it to a kind of reasonably intermediate angle. I'm going to set it to 50 degrees. We're going to make a full set of measurements in a moment. So um, let's just get a piece of paper. We're going to make a note that, that the angle of incidence is 50 degrees. And then we've got to make a judgment here. What is the angle of refraction? So we're judging between 180. Obviously, that isn't really 180. That's zero degrees. That's the normal. And then we're coming round to here and we're trying to judge the best we can the centre of that bright area. Um, and I think that's coming out at 210, which is an angle of refraction of 30 degrees. So we're just going to use those to um, make one estimate of the refractive index. Um, once we've done that, we're going to make a whole set of measurements and then uh, you're going to make a graph and we can think about how the graph relates to um, the refractive index. Uh, if you have difficulty, now we'll come back to measurements in a moment. So there's some numbers. As a calculator, liberated from work. Thank you very much, Rick, for pointing me in the direction of that. So we know the equation is, um, what we want to do here is work out the refractive index of that block. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And in this instance, we can say, the angle of incidence was um, 50 degrees and the angle of refraction was 30 degrees. So this is theta one, this is theta two. So 
um, oh, and I'll give you one more hint because I'm being nice at the moment. N1 is equal to one because it came in through air. So I'd like you to pause the video now uh, and then all calculate what the refractive index of the material is just from this one pair of readings. So I'm assuming you've got an answer. I'm just now gonna check that with you. So we've got one times sine 50 equals N, the unknown refractive index, times sine 30. So N is going to be sine 50 over sine 30. Bring the calculator over, just checking it's in degrees before we go any further. So I just need sine 50 um, over sine 30. And that is equal to a syntax error. How absolutely marvellous. Let's just try that again. If anyone can spot what I did wrong, please. You can put something in the comments, I guess. 1.53. It's a bit of an estimate and we'll hopefully get a, bet a better number soon. Okay. Um, let's go back to here. I'm not going to give you any more measurements from now on. Um, well, I'll tell you, what, I'll give you the angles of incidence from now on. It's up to you to make the measurements. Um, now, I've just tested this. I've uploaded a little um, short video and check that I can read off my phone um, the appropriate numbers. If you're having difficulty, you can do a very limited pinch to zoom on YouTube, but it's very limited. But um, I'll just do a quick um, screen, screen grab, just do a quick screenshot, go to your gallery. So do a screenshot at each one if you can't read it off. And then you can go back to your gallery and then you can pinch to zoom for each of them. So our first reading, oh dear, I got the older, Oh, so the thing to focus, there you go, back in focus. Oh, that's weird. I only likes to go in focus with my fingers there, right? You can all have a... Ah, is that because it's trying to focus on the centre? How bizarre is that? I'll just try moving it over a bit. Um, so what, what we're going to do is our first reading is that one. And I'm going to... Yeah, you don't have to read that one off. That's zero degrees... Uh, and zero degrees, isn't it? So we're going to do five more readings. Okay. And if I say now take the reading, because it takes a bit of lining up. Okay, take a reading. So you're going to need to write and record the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. I don't suppose when we do this, we'll all get exactly the same answers. Um, should be close enough. So take a reading. Okay. Um, take a reading. Obviously pausing the video if you're struggling to make move fast enough. Um, take a reading. Last one, and it gets a bit tricky if you get. Obviously, I've got to make sure that the actual. Okay, so you can ignore this light here. It's just this beam. It's the centre of the beam about where my pencil is there. Is the reading. Okay, so you've got a set of readings now. Now what we're going to do. Well, our equation is uh, N1 sine theta one equals n two sine theta two. But we can simplify that somewhat because we know n one is equal to one. And we're gonna say theta one is equal to the angle of incidence and theta two is equal to the angle of refraction. So we can say sine the angle of incidence is equal to n sine the angle of refraction. And we're going to plot a graph. Let's think about what graph are we going to plot. Um, 
Well, the graph we're going to plot, the angle we changed in this instance, wasn't it, was the angle of incidence. We can't plot the angle itself because that's not proportional, but you can see sine i and sar, sine i and sine r are proportional. So sine i goes here and sine r goes there. That makes sine r the y variable, doesn't it? So we want to write, try and write this equation in the form y equals mx plus c. Um, so you get sine r equals 1 over n sine i plus 0. So sine r is y, 1 over n is the gradient, m sine i is x, and there should be no intercept. It should go be a straight line through the origin. And we have got a point that will be the origin, although um, we don't necessarily get, we're not necessarily use that point. Uh, no, we don't. We do use it as a point, but it's no, we don't force it through that point. There's no more point than any other, than any other reading. So you're now going to need to create, well, as you usually do this manually on your calculator, you're going to need a little table, aren't you? For um, I and R, and then you're going to need sine I, and you need sine R. I guess this will need, um, Units, those don't use those units because they're ratios. And you probably haven't got any graph paper at home. If you have, you can do it manually. So what I suggest is you quickly open up a spreadsheet, which you can get once you're into um, My Day and My Files. You can just click on Excel online under the apps. Or if you prefer, you can use um, Sheets in Chrome. Just put in um, put in some data. Uh, Put, put in the two columns out here, just put the sine i and the sine r in um, and then plot an xy scatter if people need me to i can make a little video about um how to how to get the gradient from the graph yeah so i shall do that later so there'll be two video links um and also there'll be some other questions to complete as well all the best with your home study stay safe thank you very much